Hi everybody, welcome to Paper Wishes Weekly Webisodes. I'm Lene Gehrig and today I've got a fantastic collection of stamps. These are from Stampendous, Fran's wonderful cling rubber stamps. They're perfect images uh, for coloring and we've got some great greetings for your birthday. I can't wait to show you what my friend Debbie and I came up with, so come play with us. So I want to show you this beautiful card that my friend Debbie made. She has used this stamp, it's called Geranium Pitcher. And if you're not familiar with cling rubber stamps, they come like this. And some people, if they're new to them, they try to peel off this backing right here. And this part right here, this little cling plastic part, this doesn't come off. This would actually stick to your stamping block or stick to the inside of your stamping platform. So um, that's something to be aware of. They are wonderful, they give a really nice clear image and one of my favorites to use. And Debbie did some beautiful coloring here using some tri-blend spectrum, uh, tri-blend markers by Spectrum Noir and we'll be getting into some coloring in a minute but I wanted to talk about what types of ink work with alcohol-based markers. So I've got a few here. Um, this is alcohol proof dye ink. This is by Spectrum Noir. It's made specifically to go with their pens. It works br brilliantly. And it right there on the package is alcohol proof. So you know you can't go wrong by using that. It comes in black noir and rustic brown. Um, there's a few other shades too, but these are the ones I primarily use. Oops, and then we got from Memento. This is a tuxedo black ink. And these are water-based inks. Why do you want to use water-based ink with alcohol markers. And that's because if you used two products, one for stamping and one for coloring, that were both made with um, an alcohol-based product, they would just blend together. They would just intermingle and you get a really muddy stamp and it wouldn't, you wouldn't like the coloring. Um, so you wanna stamp with something that's water-based that does not react with the alcohol-based marker. So I always like to think of them as like, opposites do not attract in this case. You want to use things that are opposite each other. So water-based ink, alcohol markers, uh, are that's what you want to use. Okay, You don't want to use two products that are of the same base. Okay, So for this one, she stamped that and then used her little tri-blend markers to color them in. I'm not going to go over every color that's on this one. If you're interested in that, just look below the video and you'll see pictures of the cards. If you click on them, then you'll see all the colors that she used. Um, I should say that she backed or covered her paper with this wonderful little red dot. Um, this is for Dotted Duos number one. And on one side of the paper, it's got a little small micro dot. And on the other side, well, it doesn't show you, but on the other side, it's got a nice big cheery dot. There we go. <laughs> So um, this is just one of our favorites to have. It comes in three different packs, um, Dotted Duos 1, 2, and 3, um, with all different color schemes. And then she used a little bit of red ribbon here from that red ribbon set, which is great to have on hand. The stamp for the greeting is so wonderful. Each new day is a special gift. Open it and celebrate, celebrate and enjoy it. And I think that is really sweet for birthdays or you know really it could be for anything that you just want to in, really enjoy. Let's take a look at another card. This one is called Wild Bunch and it's a beautiful bouquet and for this one Debbie did some gold embossing. Okay so let's talk about how she covered her card first with Sunflower uh, 12 by 12 pattern cardstock and she used this paper that's right there it's kind of a nice tan. Um, and then she inked the edges of this and then did her gold embossed stamping. And let me find that. If you are new to embossing, you wanna start with a clear embossing ink. We've got several to choose from. They're all our favorites. Um, they all do the same thing. And really, I think it comes down to what kind of pad you like to have on your embossing pad. This one's kind of spongy. Um, this one, is very dirty. <laughs> it's, it's also a little spongy, but a little more firm. Basically, you want to have a nice sponge on your um, clear embossing pad so that it is really sticky. It's basically just sticky clear ink. And while it's sticky, after you've stamped with it, you're going to sprinkle on your embossing powder 
Okay, and this one is wonderful, it's gold detail. You sprinkle that on, tap off the excess, and the outline is going to cling to that stamped image, and then you're going to use a heat gun to heat that, and it just melts those little bits of plastic, really, um, into this outline. And what I'm gonna do here, what that looks like on white cardstock. And it has a nice little raised edge to it. Wonderful for coloring. And um, Debbie also stamped here on some white uh, vellum, and then she stamped and embossed that, and then she took a gold embossing pad and just inked the edges of that. And behind this, she placed some um, acetate. And it kind of is a nice firm, sort of like gluing this using some glue stick, actually. Um, to the back of the vellum and then gluing that to the acetate allows you to have a little bit of a firmer base because um, like vellum is very, I don't know, it's very thin and it doesn't have uh, a lot of firmness to it. And so placing that acetate on that made it have a nice little platform there. Um, so I thought that was really sweet. She once again used that red ribbon set. So let's show you a little bit of coloring here. So the colors that Debbie used are golden, yellow, brown, dull green, um, antique pink, brown, red blend, and dark red blend. All right, so what we're gonna do is start with the gold brown. The gold brown, she's the lightest color. Let's do it. let's start with the medium color. Maybe we can zoom in on this, Steve. You're gonna start coloring at the base of the flower, just right in the close part there. And then you're gonna to go to the lightest color. If you're not familiar with tri-blend markers, they are wonderful. There are three pens of the same color, but in different shades. There's a dark, a medium, and then the light. And it just, when you blend them together like that. It just gives you this wonderful ombre effect. If you're new to coloring, it is a wonderful tool. So I've already started off here with the um, medium shade towards the base of the petals. And now I'm just taking the lightest shade and I'm coloring over that medium, that darker one, and then just blending out to the end of the petals. So that gives you a little bit of shading towards the center and then it gets lighter. Okay, now we're gonna take this darker shade and we're gonna do the flower, the little flower center. We're gonna do at the bottom here, so it's dark. And then we're gonna go to back to the medium shade and color up like that. So it's darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. And then, let's see, what else can we show you? Here is, this is the antique pink. Okay, and for this one, darker at the base of the petal. Okay, and then start with the light. I always like to start, sometimes when you're like, not sure how dark you wanna go on a color, start with dark at the base and then go to the lightest pen. You can always darken it up, but it is hard to take away color once you've added that. Okay, just like that. And then we've got the green here. We're gonna do a little coloring on the petals. Once again, on the leaves rather, I'm going to do the darker color there and then switch to the light. I like to do darker colors toward the center or at the base of a petal or a leaf and then do lighter kind of the middle and the top. That way it just looks like it's going from dark to where the light is hitting it at the top. And I am not an expert color. I always say I just, you know, do what I do and I, and I practice and I try to get better. But there are so many people with such wonderful coloring abilities. Um, yeah, and I just try to learn from them. All right, and then you're just doing the same with these little blossoms and these little buds. Let's do one more. Here is the red one. We're gonna do that medium dark color towards the bottom of the petals. And I'm just randomly going around and coloring them with just a little dot of dark. And then just go back with the lightest shade. 
And you're kind of blending that into each dot and going up. Just like that. All right. Um, I think we got everything there. So really, really beautiful job how she colored these. And as you can see on white cardstock, it's just a really different look. And then also she added, let's see. Oh, no, I think I got everything on that one. All right, this next one uses this wonderful large, this one is a, this is called pomegranate birds. And I wanted to show you how large the stamp is. Come on out, there we go. And it's just ginormous, look at that. This is the way it goes, this bird here, and then this bird's kind of looking around, it's got the pomegranates on it. And look what Debbie made, gorgeous, the slimline card. What she did was she covered her slimline, which is eight and a half by three and a half, and she covered it first with brown cardstock. Then, Choose used this die set. This is Rectangle's Torn Edge die set. It's specifically made to go with slimline cards, which is wonderful. So she stamped it twice. She stamped it once on this one right here, the background one. And then she stamped it again and die cut it, die cut it using this largest one right here. So it has this really cool torn edge. That is so cool. And then she went ahead and she, no, I have that completely wrong. We need to stop. Let's take a look at this beautiful card that Debbie made. And for this one, she stamped this on white cardstock after covering her card with brown cardstock. And then she start, stamped on white cardstock. And then she took the rectangle and torn edge die. She actually used these two dies right here together to make this little frame out of brown cardstock. This is just a really thin frame that she then glued over the card. And it just looks really cool. I love how she did that. And then of course, right here did the same thing with the little smaller frame which she foam taped and then added some weird together dazzle stickers in this really cool kind of brown coppery color. I guess it's more of a bronze color. So I love how she colored this, the pomegranates with this orange and red color and the little bluebirds. Once again, if you wanna know the exact colors that she used for this, just click on the photo of the card below the video and it'll give you all of the specific colors and the other supplies too. I wanted to show you a card that I did. This one, maybe we can zoom out a little bit. This one uses the same stamp, but I used it instead of using it as a slim line, um, horizontally, I just placed it like this across the card. So I just used a portion of it using this bird instead of this bird. So you can see you can use it in lots of different ways. And I should mention what I love using is stamping white cardstock and all of these cards were used, um, used um, hunky dory stamping white cardstock. And I'll put the link to that below the video in our products used. All right, so I wanted to show you the colors that I used here. So we've got, let's see, dark red. I used, for to do the pomegranates, I used both dark red and orange. And golden brown, dull green. And then for the bird right here for the feathers, I used um, iced gray. And then we've also got ice blue. And for this one, I actually used this one, I stamped it with rustic brown alcohol proof ink. And I loved, I love coloring with brown and it's just a little different than the kind of the, <clears throat> the harshness sometimes that black can have. Um, I should also mention for my background paper on this one, I used Joyful Christmas, this wonderful plaids. Um, I love using this year round because we've got some really great plaids on here. I used this one right here. It doesn't have any snowflakes on it or anything. And I just used a little strip at the top and the bottom. And then put right along here, these are primary color thin line dazzle stickers. So we've got the three primary colors and then we also added uh, brown, green and black. And I used brown along the top and bottom of my little colored piece here. And then I also added red here. And then I've got the little We're Together Dazzle stickers, which I showed you before, a little knot of little uh, red ribbon. 
And then I forgot to grab these, but I did add some little sweet little um, red glitter jewel dazzle stickers there. And just added those as the pomegranate seeds. There's one there in its mouth as well. So as far as coloring, I'm going to show you how I colored the pomegranate. Because I think that using those two colors is really fun. So I'm going to color. Let's color this one right here. So first I just use the darkest shade of the red color here. And then I went along the bottom edge here. And then around the top. Then I used the medium shade kind of around this little opening where he's kind of broken into the pomegranate. I used the golden color on the inside, kind of where that flesh is. And I just put some along kind of the top and bottom edge. And then I used the lightest color to color in around the rest of that pomegranate inside piece there. All right, and then I switched over to the orange. All right, and I used the darkest shade of the orange. Okay, and we're just coloring the entire pomegranate with orange. And really just blending it in with that dark red. And I just thought using those two colors um, was just a really cheery, instead of just coloring it all red, I liked that blend with the orange. I think it kind of made it pop even more. There we go. Whenever I color this and I think about pomegranates, they're my daughter's favorite fruit. Whenever they're in season in Oregon, which is usually in the winter, we have to get a couple of pomegranates. And she spends about an hour getting all the seeds out of them and then about 20 minutes to eat them. She just loves them by the spoonful. All right, now we're going to take, whoa, I pulled the innards out of my pen. Have any of you ever done that before? Kind of alarming at first, but they just go right back. Little dots of the darkest shade, and then I'm going to switch to the medium. And I'm just coloring these in because then I'm just going to put the smallest size of red glitter jewel dazzle right on the center of those and just really makes those pop. See how those look on there. And as far as my little bird goes, I did sort of the golden brown just along that little breast there. And then the medium. All along here. And I also used the medium on those little feet kind of went out there right on the beak and then the red on that little berry or pomegranate seed really. And use the lightest color right there on the face. And then use the dark, this is um, ice gray and I used the darkest shade on this one. Okay, and then I did also use a little bit of black, a uh, Spectrum Noir black marker on this and forgot to grab that as well. Um, I did that here just to kind of outline a little bit and I will put that in the products used below. But I added that black pin at the very end. And just went around the top of the wing with the dark. That's how I colored my little bird. And then for the background, I just colored um, using the ice gray blend with the lightest color. So guys, that's it. Um, I had so much fun coloring these. I know Debbie did as well. So definitely check out the money saver that we have on this collection of stamps. It's on the right hand side. And uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, down below, we have all the products used. So if you're just interested in a greeting or one of the products that we used, you can find that there. If you're watching this on YouTube, we haven't forgot about you. Look below the description box. Um, 
look below the video in the description box and you'll find a link that'll take you to this Paper Wishes webisode page. And hey, consider giving us a thumbs up. It really helps people find our channel. And subscribe. We do three to five videos a week and we don't want you to miss a thing. Thanks for joining me next time. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.